In order to make your granny square mittens, we're going to start by making four granny squares. So with the larger hook size, you'll start with a slip knot on your hook. And we will chain four. One, two, three, four. And we'll join to the first chain with a slip stitch to form a ring. We will then chain three. One, two, three. This counts as our first double crochet. We're now going to put two more double crochet into the ring. So yarn over into the center of the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And one more, yarn over, hook goes into the center of the ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, now we're going to make the first corner, so we chain two. And now we're going to put three more double crochet into the ring. One. Two. Three. And then chain two. And then three more double crochet into the ring. One, two, and three, and our last corner. So chain two, and three more double crochet into the ring. One, two, and three. Then we chain two, and we join to the top of the chain three that we made. like so. Now if you're going to be making your um, granny squares in lots of different colours this is where you will fasten off. If you wish to make them in just one solid colour then you would work two slip stitches across into and then a third slip stitch into the corner here and that's where you would then start your next chain three as your first uh, double crochet but I'm going to be fastening off here and joining in a new colour. Okay, so we're ready to start round two. So we will insert a hook into any of the corner chain spaces. We'll pull one new colour through. And then we will chain three, and this counts as our first double crochet. We will then put two more double crochet into the same space. One. Two, and now we're going to form our corner, so we chain two and three double crochet into the same space. One, two, and three. So that's our first corner formed. So we're now going to work into the next corner. So into the next corner, it's three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. One, three, chain two, and three more double crochet. One, two, and three. We're now going to work the next two corners in exactly the same way. So in this corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, and then in the following corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. I'll go ahead and do that and I will meet you back at the end of the round. Okay, so here we are at the end of the round. We're now going to join into the top of our chain three with a slip stitch. Like so. And now we're going to fasten off. Okay, so we're ready to start round three. So put your hook into any corner space and pull your new colour through. And then chain three. One, two, three. This counts as your first double crochet. 
We're going to work our corner as normal now, so two more double crochets into that same space. Chain two, and then three more double crochets into the same space. Okay, so now we have a space along the centre of the square. In that space we're going to put three double crochets. One, two, and three. And now we're ready at the next corner space. So we're going to put three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in that corner. And in each space around the sides, it will be three double crochet. And in each corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. Okay, so here we are at the end of the round. So we're going to finish that off by putting a slip stitch into the top of our chain three. Like so. And then we're going to fasten off and we're ready to join in our next colour. So we're ready to start round four and for round four and round five we will just repeat round three. So we're just going to join in our new colour in the corner, chain three and then work a corner as normal, two more double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. And now across the sides we have two spaces to work into, so we'll put three double crochet into each space along the sides. In each corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So after round four you will need to do one more round in the same way, and I'll, we'll meet you back when we're ready to join our squares together. So once you've worked rounds four and five, your granny square should look something like this. And you only need to make four of these in total for your mittens. Okay, so we're going to take two of our granny squares and we're going to join them together to make our first mitten. So you want to put the squares together, right sides together, like so. And then using the same hook that you used to crochet your squares, we're going to put our hook through both the corner loops and we're going to join in our yarn with a slip stitch and then we're going to put a single crochet into that same space like so and we're then going to single crochet all the way across crocheting both pieces together so your hook will go through first stitch and then you want to find the corresponding stitch in the square underneath so your hook will go through that stitch and then you finish off your single crochet. I'll show you one more time so your hook will go through the next stitch and you find the same stitch under in the square underneath your hook will go through and you'll crochet both of those together. So you're going to go ahead and work all the way along and once you get to the end of the square you'll put your last single crochet into the corner space. So here we are, we've joined our square all the way across on one side, our final single crochet going into that chain space at the end, we'll then fasten off. You might want to weave in your ends um, as you go along, otherwise it can, they can kind of get in the way of it when you're trying to add the ribbing. Okay, so that's what the join will look like, joined across on one side. Now we're going to join the other side, so keep your squares right side together. And we're going to join our yarn into the corner space just as we did previously. So we join with a slip stitch and then we will single crochet into that same space. Now we're just going to join three stitches together at this end. 
So our hook will go through that first stitch. We find the corresponding stitch on the bottom square and we need a single crochet. And we'll do this for the next two stitches. And for the final stitch, like so. And now we're going to fasten off. Okay, so now turn your work over and we're going to do the same in the other corner. So just like before, we pull our yarn through in the corner space, we join with a slip stitch, single crochet into the same space, and then single crochet the first three stitches together. One. Two and three and then we fasten off okay so I've gone ahead and sewn in all my ends and now what you can do is turn it back the right way around and you can try try it on at this point to see how it fits so the gap you've left here is where we will crochet the thumb So when you try it on, it should look something like this. It should fit nicely around your hand. If you find it's uh, too big, as I said, you can try with uh, four round granny square or going down a hook size. Okay, so we're ready to add the ribbing that will be at the wrist. So you will want your smaller hook. So you will join your new color in at one of the corner spaces uh, where you have the seam here. This is the inside seam as this is where the thumb goes. So you will insert your hook into the corner space, pull your yarn through and join with a slip stitch. And you're now going to chain 15. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so we're now going to start working into this chain. We're going to skip that first stitch and then we're going to start working single crochets all the way along this chain. So you skip the first stitch Insert your hook into the second chain and single crochet. Hook goes into the next chain, single crochet into the next chain and single crochet. So you want to continue single crochets all the way along and I will meet you back at the end of the row. Okay, so here we are at the end of the row. We've worked single crochets all the way along our chain. So we now have 14 single crochets. So we'll slip stitch into the next stitch, like so, and also the next stitch. We then turn our work. We're now going to skip the slip stitches and single crochet into the back loop only, all the way along are single crochets. So skip the first two, which are the slip stitches, and then single crochet into the back loop only. And you're going to put single crochets all the way along into the back loops. And I will meet you up at the end of the row. Okay, so here we are at the end of the row. We're now ready for the third row of our ribbing. So we're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to continue in the same way. We're going to put a single crochet into every stitch along, working into the back loops only. Like so. And I will continue and meet you back at the end of the row. 
So we've worked our single crochet stitches into the back loop all the way along and now we're ready to put two slip stitches into the base of our granny squares. So this is the next stitch we need to work into, so we slip stitch into there and slip stitch into the next stitch, we turn our work and then we're ready to work along for our next row. So you're now going to repeat the last two rows until you have worked the ribbing all the way around and have reached back to the beginning again. Now when you get to the point where your squares are joined you can work into this gap between the squares if you feel like you need to. Okay so I'll meet you back when I finished the ribbing. So once you've finished working all the way around your mitten it should look something like this. Now we need to join this, uh, these two edges together. So we're going to turn our glove inside out. You don't need to uh, fasten off, you can leave your yarn joined for this. So you're going to want to chain one. And then you want to put these two edges together. So we're going to work into those bottom loops of the underneath of the stitches from the first row and then through your stitch on the last row. So put your hook into that first stitch and into the first stitch on the, uh, the other row and your single crochet. So the hook goes in to the bottom of that stitch and into the stitch. I like to work through the back loops here but you can work through both loops, it doesn't really make that much difference. And you're going to want to do this all the way along until you get to the end of the row. So there we are at the end of the row, all you need to do now is fasten off and weave in your ends. Okay so all that's left to do now is to add a row of ribbing around the top of our mitten and around the thumb. So to start the ribbing at the top of your mitten we're going to join in our yarn at the seam here in this corner space and we're going to chain four and we're now going to work our ribbing in exactly the same way as we did around the cuff so we'll skip that first stitch and we'll single crochet into the next three chains And then we'll slip stitch into the next two stitches. And turn our work. And then as before we'll skip the two slip stitches and then we'll single crochet into the back loops until the end of the until the end of the chain. So we've got three single crochet stitches and we're going to continue working our ribbing all the way around the top of our mitten. And we will also do exactly the same around the thumb. So we will join in our yarn here. We will chain four and then we'll work but single crochets back along that chain. So we have three single crochets and the ribbing will work all the way around the thumb. And you join in exactly the same way as before, although it is quite um, narrow. So if you want, you might find it easier just to um, take a needle and some yarn and sew those edges together, it's entirely up to you. So I'll meet you back when I've finished the mitten. So here we are with the finished mitten, as you can see we have the ribbing all the way around the top and around the thumb and it fits really nicely.